<laughs> I said, I'd like a baby, please. And, um, and he said, right, before we do any of that, before we do any of the fertility stuff, we need to do your routine smear test, OK? Now, I wondered about talking about smear tests on stage, because I would hate an audience to ever feel uncomfortable. I really would. But then I thought, do you know what? I've seen male comedians get up on stage, and this isn't me slagging them off, but I've seen male comedians get up on stage and talk about their dicks for an hour. <laughs> and <laughs> afterwards, audiences go, do you know what that one? He's a real thinker. So I'm just... <laughs> trying to readdress the balance so I am going to talk about going for a smear test but please don't worry the whole routine lasts about three minutes and it is much easier if you relax okay <laughs> I'll set the scene <laughs> you're in stirrups so it's like you've been riding a horse and then the horse has fucked off and you've toppled over and ended up in the back room of an NHS hospital. <laughs> then what's happened, every time I've been for a smear, and I don't know if it's something they're rolling out just for me, but every time I've been for a smear, what seems to happen is the doctor will come over and they go, hi, Miss Ruffle, thanks so much for coming in. It's really important that you keep up to date with your smear test. Now listen, if this is a problem, you can absolutely say no, you can totally say no, it's not a big deal. But would it be all right? We have some trainee doctors in today. <laughs> and could they all come in? And you want to go, no, no, thank you. There's a horse on the loose. Could they go and get that? But <laughs> you love the NHS, so you've got to go, yes, of course, no problem. It's absolutely fine. Ah, ah, ah. And then what happens is between 65 and 70, trainee doctors come in. It's like a walking tour's got lost and end up in a fanny. It's not good, right? It's not good. I also need to let you know something. People in the room that haven't been to a smear, I need to let you know something. When you're having your smear, you feel a little bit silly. You feel a little bit silly, and I'll tell you for why. T-shirt, nothing, little pair of socks. A little bit silly, a little bit silly. You feel a little bit like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> the doctor's back. She says, Miss Ruffle, thanks for laying in the trainee doctors. And would it be okay if one of the trainee doctors did your smear? And you want to go, oh, no, I'll have someone's had a crack it before, please. But... You love the NHS, so you've got to go, your school's no problem, it's absolutely fine. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. And then what happened is the trainee doctor came at me like this. She says, Miss Ruffle, would it be okay if one of the other training doctors did your paperwork? I was like, yeah, one's on my chuff, they don't fill out a form. Carry on. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> so she comes over, she goes, Susie Jacqueline Ruffle? I'm like, yep, yeah, that's me. She goes, okay, first question, what are you using as contraception? <laughs> it's like the undercut and the dot martin's not enough, what would you need? <laughs> I said, I'm not using contraception. She went, oh, well, if you're sexually active, you do need to be using contraception. And I was like, oh, blah, 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 blah. I don't. I just don't, I just don't. She said, no, you do, you do, because even if you're using like, the old-fashioned technique or you know, the Catholic technique, I was like, nothing about what I'm doing is Catholic. Uh, she said, you should be very careful. You could have a baby tomorrow. I mean, I think it takes nine months. I mean... I've got four GCSEs, you're nearly a doctor, you should know that. And she wasn't picking up what I was putting down, and what I was putting down was a KD Lang album. And eventually, <laughs> eventually I just had to come out. Now, of course, there'll be queer people here tonight. Uh, there's always the pitter-patter of Birkenstocks at my shows. Um, <laughs> there'll be queer people here tonight. And you know what it's like? Sometimes you have to come out in situations where you didn't know you were coming out that day. It wasn't in the diary, I haven't scheduled this. <laughs> So I had to say, I'm a gay lady. I'm a lady that's gay. I'm a lady. <laughs> and the woman that was down here doing the jiggery pokery, <laughs> which I think is the official draft. <laughs> <laughs> I seen a gay lady and she popped up like I'd birthed her. So, like, whoa, <laughs> she is a lot older than I thought she'd be, but I am very proud she's a doctor. <laughs> Up and went, oh, right, that makes sense. Snug. <laughs> snug. What a weird word to use. Has that gone on my record? Snug. It sounds like she's looking down 
there and she can see the back end of a Tudor pub. <laughs> <laughs> so hard, the speculum across the room! <laughs> <laughs>